Welcome everybody back into our GCM mock draft. We are moving down the board and now we have got the Utah Jazz with the number nine pick. Joining me now is Andy Larson. Welcome. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited that you are here and I'm so excited because the Utah Jazz are a team that had such a good start to the season. Like so good. Everyone was like, what the heck is happening? The Utah Jazz are killing it. They ended up 37 and 45 um, and they're building around some really, really good pieces. Obviously, Larry Markkinen, what else could you say about him? Like, he's so good and such, like, out of nowhere player. I'm sure you have covered him for however long, but I was, like, so impressed with him this year. Uh, Jordan Clarkson, Walker Kessler, Colin Sexton now, Kelly Olenek, just so many good pieces. Is there something, obviously, you covered the Jazz this season. Is there something where you were like, man, if the Utah Jazz had a, a point guard, if they had a shooter, a better shooter, if they had blank, 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 they would have made a difference in this season that you could see getting someone in this draft because nine, you can get a good steal at nine. There are still a whole lot of guys on the board that could be difference makers. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, during the season, honestly, probably that spot was the point guard spot, right? Like that was, there was Colin Sexton was hurt for some of the year. Kalen Horton Tucker kind of came on at the end of the year, but some of that was just, kind of who he was on the court with and, and being able to take total control of the ball. Um, you know, and, and the Jazz traded Mike Conley at, at the trade deadline last year. So kind of, you know, long-term, that's the most obvious position that it's like, hey, you know, it, you probably need kind of an upgrade in talent. You look at kind of around the Western Conference and that's where you see a ton of talent and you see, you know, some of the best players in the league that the Jazz, you know, don't really have right now. But I will say this, Danny Ainge at the end of, uh, at the end of the season, said, look, it's not so much about what position, what, uh, you know, kind of skills we need. We just need more talent right now. You know, they, he really feels that they're um, several players away from kind of being real true championship contenders. And, you know, I think for that reason, they're going to be drafting best player available at this spot at number nine. All right. And you have seen the board. So there's no point of going through different positions. If, if, the Utah Jazz feel like best talent, best player available, then let's let's get right to it, Andy. Let's see who you think is the best player available with the options that you have on our mock draft. So I am putting Andy Larson on the clock, drafting for the Utah Jazz. Who are you going to take? I'm going to take Taylor Hendricks from UCF. Ooh, uh, you know, one. I truly love what this kid brings, and it's one of those things where his defense just pops on video. Um, he honestly reminds me a lot of Memphis's Jaron Jackson Jr. in terms of his ability to impact plays from the weak side, get those weak side blocks. He's he's not quite as long as Jaron Jackson Jr. And, you know, that's why he's not the fourth pick. He's the eighth pick or the ninth pick, excuse me. Yeah. But he is, you know, so mobile, so long uh, and, and has a really nice three point shot. Actually shot almost 40 percent from three last year yeah. over some really kind of contested closeouts. It, it's he's fun to watch. You know, he's. Uh, good at taking charges. He's he's a hustle player. Uh, I, I think he's a kind of a defender who can be really versatile and play in a bunch of different positions, can switch, uh, can even play some center a little bit. I, I just kind of love what he brings. And, you know, even if he doesn't have kind of the ball in hand skills right away, he can come on the floor. I think they want to be a really helpful NBA role player. And then you hope that kind of the, the skill level comes up and he can really kind of get the ball in his hands a little bit more and start creating. But uh, man, I, you know, love the idea of adding this kind of talent to the Utah Jazz, even though they already have, you know, significant front court talent with Lowry Markinen and, and Walker Kessler. I still love Taylor Hendricks and, and just think that he is uh, a terrific fit with what Will Hardy wants to do with his jazz team moving forward. Well, your pick Taylor Hendricks, I know just pissed off Orlando because we had them for their pick and then they have the 11th pick as well. And he said at the end of his, like, if Taylor Hendricks is still available, if he slides, he is ours. So the reason I say that is because I do think he is probably the highest talent um, on the board right now. Like you said, six, nine, two, ten. 10. Uh, he is like very much like, I don't like saying this three and D because he is a forward but his shot is so good and he is very much Jaron Jackson Jr. a great shot blocker he he was grabbing I think almost seven rebounds a game um something else that impressed me which I guess I sh I'm easily impressed it shouldn't impress me but he did shoot almost 80 percent from the free throw line in college and and that is a skill that a lot of bigs unfortunately don't have so another plus uh for him 
do you see him and I don't mean making an impact in terms of moving the needle and winning a championship in his rookie year but do you see him making an impact on this team like starting lineup caliber type player I do and you know I think ultimately he would probably replace Kelly Olenek um, in the Jazz's starting lineup if not on day one pretty darn quickly you know I think the Jazz have been pretty committed to playing Larry Market and mostly at the small forward position at three Maybe you slide Taylor Hendricks there and as a four, or, you know, really pretty interchangeable three, four guys, you know, between Hendricks and Markkinen. And then you have Walker Kessler locking down the paint kind of behind those. So I, I think, you know, you look at the things that Jazz need to improve, you know, 23rd defensively last year in the NBA. Offensively, they were in a good spot. Defensively, I think Hendricks is uh, weak side protect, but, you know, rim protection plus uh, the stuff he can do on ball to keep guys out of the paint, I think would be really helpful for the Jazz right away. All right. I like that pick. The last question I'm going to ask you is very much like uh, let's pretend this, this mock draft doesn't exist. Like let's pretend you had everyone available. Who's like in this kind of like eight to 11 slot. Would Taylor Hendricks be your first pick? He might be. I mean, he is still really good. You know, I, I do like him more than uh, the wizard selection with Anthony black. Like I, I think uh, his ability to shoot and kind of the the length gives him a, a clear advantage, even though Anthony Black has, you know, it's also a very good defender and has tremendous feel. Um, I like Taylor Hendricks a lot. Um, you know, I, I think maybe you talk about one of the Thompson twins, if they fall all the way to number nine or, you know, Cam Whitmore, but we're really kind of talking about players who should go above number yeah. nine. And, you know, I, I think uh, if Taylor Hendricks does get to number nine, I think the jazz really heavily, heavily consider taking him. I do like case Wallace and I'm hoping he's around at number like 16. Him. If I'm a, if I'm the jazz mm-hmm. probably won't be, but we'll see. Um, but you know, with three picks in this first round, there's a lot of different ways this can go. For sure. For sure. I love that you brought up case Wallace because he's probably one of my favorite guys. Uh, and I'm hoping, so I'm only going to go to 14. So I'm hoping someone picks him so that I could just talk about him, but <laughs> Andy, thank you so much. I really like this pick. And I guess in a few days, well, no. And I, I am hoping that you go one for one on your first, first time on our mock draft. So thank you so, so very much. Thanks again for having me.